my favorite parts about Chicago is the weather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I like the weather. I like to experience the four seasons. Yeah. Every winter and fall, I get mad that I live near a place called the Windy City and there's wind blowing. That's the only thing that bothers me about it. I can live with everything else. Yeah. It's, it's the fucking wind. It, I, I, get you, I get you on the wind. Mm-hmm. Like when it does get cold, it's fine, but then the wind comes in and it adds that extra layer right. to it. Like, oh, great. I'm glad I live in a tundra. Like, <laughs> The reason I like the weather out here, though, is, is it's the season's part of it. It's uh-huh. like it, it's hard to explain. Have you seen Groundhog's Day? No, when, I haven't. Uh, it's it's when you live in a place where the weather is the same, hot, cold, whatever it is, when it's uh-huh. the same over and over again, you kind of lose track of time and your perception of change is a little different. So, I, I can see that. Yeah. So out here, it's like, oh, it's it's becoming spring, and mm-hmm. I can feel that. And summer I'm in Chicago sneezing is, a lot more. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, summer in Chicago is unfucking untouchable. It's yeah. so great. Um. But so California this is going to be your first time going. Yeah. Uh, and you're with Will Hill and who? Chris Fort. Chris Fort. Are you guys like close friends? I would say for the most part, yeah. Okay. And my, met through comedy. I yeah. Assume. Yeah. We met. I, oh, I want to make a guess. I make a guess at this. We met at Barton. I want to say yes. How <laughs> you you struck me as someone different in the comedy scene in that you are white and you <laughs> and we you, gave it away <laughs> <laughs> and you associate with black comics generally from what I've seen. Yeah, Barton was one of the first rooms I started going to. That's crazy. I know, like I had no idea. I was just like, all right, let me find old mics. So I was like, this place looks fun. And then yeah. I was gonna say it was like there in Laugh Factory, the first mics I started going to. How how was your first experience doing comedy, especially in that type of room? It was it was surprisingly all right. Like I didn't like I didn't bomb terribly. I didn't kill, right. but I didn't. I didn't like eat shit and like go home after rethink my life. Like honestly, that's a really good. That's a good bar to set when you first start. If uh-huh. you're going there, uh, considering considering it, what the yeah. room is now, uh, was it different when you first started? A little bit. It was because I was what was it like 2017, 2018? Ooh, okay, okay. This is pre pandemic. Yeah, pre pandemic. What was it like pre pandemic versus post? It felt like the like they were there for the comedy. Hmm. Now it feels like they're there for the for the uh, antics. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could see it. I um, I came here post pan, not or, or mid pandemic. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what Chicago is pre pandemic. Oh, and I feel like I maybe have missed out on an era. I wanted. I don't even know. Like it kind of like because I I live in Indiana, so it's. Mm. Shit, was it different? It probably was. I just didn't notice it. You were you were new, so yeah. it must have been just a different thing. Yeah. What? So you're from Indiana? Did you? Are you? You live in the city now. You didn't drive from Indiana here. No, I drove you? from Indiana. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. Really? About an hour hike. Yeah. Oh, it's an hour. That, you know what? And that's okay. That's the other thing about California. People don't realize how big it is. Uh huh. Like the idea of casually driving to another state is an insane concept out there in it you if you were to try to go to nevada from where i was from it'd take you about four hours jesus and that's about the closest state you could get to Mm -hmm. so when you're like yeah no i came from across the state i'm like i i I can't even mm -mm." (laughs) but that that makes sense it's like an hour away um so you're from indiana do you plan on moving out here eventually um it's between here like la or new york Okay. One of the three, depending. Uh, right now, Chicago's in the lead. Yeah. But uh, if, you know, obviously want to pursue comedy full time, either LA or New York, I'm just going to see. After I go to LA, I'm going to see which one mm-hmm. I like better. We've already been to New York, and that was a great fucking time. So. What? Um, have you been to New York yet? Yeah. How do you. What, is, what was it like? How'd you feel? I like. I like. The reason why I would want to move to a city, like, I always like coming to Chicago. Because living in Indiana, there's nothing to fucking do. I don't like small towns. I like the city. I like the nightlife. I like the ability to do anything at any time mm-hmm. is such a fun feeling to me. So when we went to New York, we're in Manhattan. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. We got stranded in Brooklyn. It's like, we shouldn't be here, but it's kind of fun. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's an, an adventure behind every door. It's, it's Basically, yeah. Okay. And was it like, for someone like you, was it just boring growing up? or 
there was I don't want to say it was boring, but there was nothing really too exciting. Mm-hmm. Like it was like it was the repetitiveness of kind of doing the same thing almost every weekend. Right. And I know that Chicago shits on Indiana pretty hard from what I got. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Indiana shits on Indiana pretty hard too. Like, yeah. so I, I stay in the region, so it's like the like the Ham and Munster Highland area. Okay. So that top northwest corn northwest Indiana is where I live at. Okay. And so basically, the rest of Indiana hates that part of Indiana because it's so close and associated with Chicago. Mm. But Chicago's like, no, it has nothing to do with us. So when people say they're from Chicago and they live there, it's like, no, they're lying to you. Yeah, <laughs> you're the 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 middle child of the space. Yeah. 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 I get you. Mom and dad just don't really care about us anymore. <laughs> so growing up, like growing up in Indiana, you fairly bored. Like, were, what what were you like as a kid? Were you the funny kid growing up? Not until ooh, not until like sixth grade. What was going on pre sixth grade? I was like, you know, when you go to like comedy clubs and you have the one guy in the room who's trying to be funny like he's heckling the comics uh-huh. i was that guy <laughs> <laughs> like really- something would happen like two other people would have a conversation or they would be saying something to the teacher and i would just ho- hop in everyone would turn around like <sighs> there goes fucking oh, steven again <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 no i i was kind of that kid as well just yeah. hyper just wanted the attention but didn't know how to do it in a way that was likable yeah yeah, I know that feeling. You're just trying to be loud, like loud noises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, loud noises, inappropriate sounds, poor timing, like no comedic timing. Mm-hmm. I, I get you. So then around sixth grade, what was the change? I just remember one day I was sitting in computer class. I was making these two kids just die laughing. And then, you know, like even when we're as comics, when we're on stage and you get that one big laugh and you're like, let me see if I can get another one. Yeah. I just kept doing that. And I was like, it's what the fuck is working? Like, this is the first time I've ever been funny. Like, yeah. And then from then it was like, oh, I want to be a comic, or you just knew what what happened from there. No, I was just like, it was like, oh, like kids started to like me now, <laughs> like, mm. and and so it was just like, oh, I can be funny. Like this is like it's like figuring out a superpower almost. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Like it's it's like when Spider Man started climbing up the wall in the first movie, and he's like, holy shit! <laughs> no being. Or when he gets the black suit, and he's like, this is pretty neat. <laughs> <laughs> being funny that I think describing it as a superpower is a real. Like, it's pretty accurate. Like, to be able to decide I'm going to be humorous right, is is, is a skill that I actually think most people don't have. You know what I mean? I agree. I agree. Like, I feel like most people, and I'm, I'm, you've been doing comedy long enough. I'm sure you've heard this. You know, my friends think I'm hilarious. You know, my friends I are, bet I'd kill out an open I, mic. I would <laughs> fucking kill, bro. Like, this guy doesn't even know what he's doing. Like, my friends say I'm hilarious. There's that guy. And then you and us as comics are like, <sighs> yeah, yeah. <it's laughs> you don't know how hard you'd bomb. <laughs> <laughs> and you want them to do it so bad, and they never will. And right. The other. But that that there is something so powerful about being able to make people laugh. Uh-huh. Um, that it's just kind of addictive, I think. And it's, it's, it's like a superpower that is only beneficial. Well, for the most part, it's beneficial to like us. Mm. It's because... We want to make you laugh. We want the attention that you guys are going to give us. We'll just, I, we have to make you laugh in order to, like, making people laugh is, like, the saving portion of being the superhero. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's like saving a cat out of a tree when there's other, like, more important shit going on almost. Yeah. I want to say it's like, we're doing minor stuff, but <laughs> we're also heroes. Don't forget. Yeah. It's a positive thing, but it's not that. And relative to other skills, like... We're not doctors, yeah. like <laughs> we're not gonna. And the weird thing is, people like that get. I wish they were. You know that that. Um, I wish I could do what you can do. Yeah, it's like, it's no. like, I'm not doing anything important, dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's such a a weird skill. It's a mm-hmm. weird art form. Mm-hmm. Um, to be trying to make somebody have an inadvertent bodily response in that way. It's mm-hmm. it's a whole other thing. When did you when did you want to start doing comedy? Like what made you Um I so I've realized this the past year. Um I'm actually I don't okay. I'm still trying to figure out how to word this, so tell me maybe maybe you can help me here. I don't think I'm funny. <laughs> keep going. Keep okay, going. yeah, I'll keep going, I'll keep going. I don't think I'm a funny person. You know when you meet the like Will Hill? 
good example of someone who is just fun. He's just a funny guy. Naturally, just funny. Mm-hmm. I'm not that guy. I'm an artistic guy. Uh huh. And I've found a way to express myself through this particular type of art. Right. Because I have a sense of control over it. But I don't think I, I'm. I'm more analytical. I like like this. I told you even before you sat down, like, this isn't the ha-ha, let's be hilarious podcast. Right. I want to get to know you and uh, your inner workings and all of that. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was trying to be funny was, like, a a defense mechanism to survive. And and I wasn't good at it. Um, And then then eventually, like, I started doing improv, which, you know, is improv. And... and, (laughs) And then I getting into like film and, and all of that and and I would I and acting, what I realized was what I had the most control over was stand up. Uh huh. Like if I if you want to be an actor, you need people to say, yeah, okay, we we will now, um, uh, you got to audition for us to act. Yeah. If you want to be in a band, well now you got a bunch of other people you got to deal with. If you want to do mm-hmm. improv, you got a bunch of other people. But with stand up. It was so just me. I didn't have to worry about anybody. One else. man band, yeah. So one man band, and it's and it you have so much. It's just you. You live and die on your own merit. Right. You're on stage. You bomb. You're the only one who mm-hmm. bombed. You can only blame yourself. And when you do well, right, you take all that glory in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, as far as the when, eighteen was when I started. Twenty five was when I started being serious. Okay. Yeah. What What about you? When When did you? St- how old were you when you started? I was like seventeen, eighteen. Okay. And then roughly. How old are you? Twenty three. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Good for, you. Good for you. Do you get that a lot? You see. Yeah, it happened sure. to me last night. Really. It happened to me last night. Uh, um, someone asked me. They were like, "How old are you?" And I was like, "I'm twenty three. And they were just like, "Fuck." <laughs> Because they're like 40 plus years old. Yeah. yeah and yeah. they're like, dude, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. I get a lot of like, you look much older than. I don't think you look old. I think you have a maturity about yourself. Yeah. I've That's... also gotten that too. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Yeah. I really, I don't, I don't, I don't know what it was that like happened like during my life that I was like, let me think like more. Like, like an adult and shit. Mm-hmm. It could have been, you know, like my parents raised me. It could have been like a movie I watched. I, f- fuck. It could have been, I've been to Mills. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, uh, I ask because I don't think I started maturing until quarantine. Yeah. Yeah. And when I look back, I, I about 25, I think that's when your frontal lobe starts to. Right. Like that, like my brain's not even fully developed yet. I got, <laughs> I got a long way to go. <laughs> But but there's there's a certain type of energy certain people put out when they feel mature. It makes me assume something traumatic happened. If I'm being honest, but but I don't know. I don't know your life. All I right. guess that's why we're here. Right. <laughs> we'll um, figure it out. We'll dig deep. Yeah. Enough. <laughs> yeah. We'll dig inside your psyche and bring something out of there. But no, you just come off poised, mature, um, but light. You don't feel like a heavy guy. Weird because to add on what you said earlier, I also don't think I'm funny either. Okay. Like every time I tell the like a new bit, mm. and then it works, I'm like, really? Like, <laughs> I'm like, you guys, re- okay, yeah. All right? And then I don't, I don't find myself liked, and I don't know if it's because I myself as a, I don't, I don't like people. I don't, mm. I don't. I think there's far too many in the world. I think we need to cut down. <laughs> it's fair. I agree. <laughs> um, do you? You don't like people. Can you elaborate on what do you mean? It's so weird because it's like I like conversing, like mm-hmm. even like this. I'm enjoying this right now. Mm-hmm. I think I don't like groups of people. I think when they start forming in groups, I'm like, okay, we. It's just, overwhelming. <laughs> it's over almost overwhelming. Yeah. And then it's more so the behaviors that people will have too. Mm-hmm. Like you ever been in the grocery store and you're walking behind someone, they're walking slow and then they just abruptly stop, <laughs> and it's just like I want to knock you over. <laughs> it's yeah. Just, it's it's the things that people do. I think that more so bothers me than the people themselves. Hmm. Hmm. I. Do you hear that? I think that's kids. Yeah. Okay. Um. I have the loudest, most interrupted podcast. Um. <laughs> I get you. I get you. I think I I like one on one interactions mm-hmm. because maybe maybe you'll relate to this. It, it's like a feeling of someone's aura or vibe. Mm-hmm. is easy to pick up on when it's just them. 
when you start adding, the more people you start to add, the more overwhelming those different vibes are because they're all different. I think it's because everyone in the, like, if you have a group of five people, everyone's trying to be liked. Mm. Okay. I think, so you're not getting the authentic them when it's just the one-on-one. Right. Like, even then, like, the one-on-one, I feel like when you meet someone, like, say, at a bar or whatever, and you guys start exchanging stories, you're telling your best stories because you want this person to like you. But you, there's also, like, the sense of vulnerability of also them being themselves. Mm. Do you do you feel like you're being yourself right? Sorry, it feels like there's a fight out outside. Do you <laughs> hear that? That's crazy. You, no, school just got out. Okay, they're all just being loud. La- oh, my God. Sorry, I, I'm pesky I, kids. I, I know. I'm feeling like the, old, the oldest man <laughs> living near a school is. Do you, do you have that thing where, like, it's summertime and you see people, like, hoodies and masks and you're like what the hell are you doing i when i see the shysties when it's hot, <laughs> I'm like what the fuck stop it you're not cool like, God damn or it. when it's winter and they're just wearing like the Shorts. one hoodie i'm like what like, you're gonna you're gonna get sick dude Be- being a young man is just doing what is inconvenient for some and thinking that that is the coolest thing to do yeah it's it's and i used to do all of that dumb shit me like, too Trying to be, I, w- I wouldn't wear my coat. I would wear two hoodies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when it's a hundred degrees, it doesn't make sense, dude. And like this whole idea of being yourself and the authenticity, and and being wanting to be liked. As I've gotten older, personally, I've let that go a lot more. Yeah, it goes away. Yeah, yeah. Like as you grow, there's a I don't give a fuckness to what people think. Almost. Yeah, you just kind of get tired. Mm-hmm. You, I'm just, it's not even that I don't like I internally want to care but it's pesky children <laughs> see what I was getting at when I said there's too many people hey. this <laughs> this is what I mean I know and I, it's funny because I know whoever's watching this can't hear how loud it is but mm-hmm. it's so loud I might close the window um, but it's fuck this I'm closing the <laughs> god damn it I'm closing the window I can't I fucking can't. Pesky children. They have. They're do. They're singing like a song. Other oh, and they're dancing. I. <laughs> I'm just being an old fucker. Man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Better keep that ruckus down. <laughs> but the the desire to be liked, the that even the anger that I used to feel on some levels because I've been working on it. On another level, I'm just too tired. Mm-hmm. Like I think my body is just slowing down. And I'm too tired to get angry. I'm too tired to care too much about what people think. Mm-hmm. I just don't have the energy. But at 23, where are you at with all of that? With being liked and I don't, I don't particularly care if you you don't you don't have to like me. There's no there's no there's no thing out there in the world that says you you gotta like me. If you don't, you don't. I know that not everyone is going to like. There's a few people I'm like I wish you would. I wish we I should, yeah. wish we I wish you'd like me a little bit more. But it, it's not something in my control. You know, it's just sometimes I know. When meeting a person for the first time, as opposed to someone I've known for years, I know what to hold back. I, you know, to get a feel on them, and then okay, we'll see if you're kind of cool. It's like when you when you get a new job and you're checking out the coworkers, and it's like, all right, who's the cool? Who's, yeah. who's the Who cool can I bring up weed to? <laughs> right. Let me do the thing. It's every twenty minutes. I'm gonna have to do that, mm-hmm. and just don't even worry about it. I got it under control. Sounds good. Um, but but the. It's interesting because in comedy, you the whole thing is being likable to other to the audience and other comedians on some like to get booked. Mm-hmm. And there's it feels like there has to be a perfect balance of yeah I don't care what people think, but I'm also socially aware enough to be able to hold back some of your like you said you know you you said when you're first meeting somebody there's like a gauge of how much you can divulge at first you're right you figure somebody out you figure out what works between the person and then you go from there right i didn't have that to me when i was younger when i when i was your age young man <laughs> um which i i desperately didn't want to have to say but we're here now um <laughs> when i was 23 i didn't have that how gauge. old are you now? So, how old are you 32 32 okay yeah when I was 23, I didn't have the gauge or understanding of that. To me, I was like, I'm going to give everyone, myself, 100%. Uh-huh. And if they don't like it, then that's their fucking fault. And it's inauthentic for me to not express every stupid fucking opinion. Right. I, I didn't have the the gas pedal and the brake pedal to say, like, 
some in some situations. Oh, we're going we're going a little too fast. Yeah, <laughs> like I didn't understand like like you know you don't have to tell everyone your opinions all the time. Right, and it's not fake to just to hear somebody say like. Oh, I like the Dodgers, and I don't like the Dodgers, and I'm like, I to, to not say anything, just let them have, let them have, let the, have the moment, yeah. And so I think, I think that's an example of how you, to me, come off mature, is to be, be having that social awareness. Well, thank you. You were welcome. <laughs> um, and within comedy, within this comedy scene, do you, I don't know, do you feel well liked? Do you care if you feel well liked? Um. No, I don't. I don't think I particularly care about being well liked because I think it's more so. It's not about your likability. Are you funny? Mm. I think that's what it should come down to. I don't yeah. think that's what it is. I think it should come down to okay. Can you go up on stage and make people laugh? If you mm. can get a good response from the crowd, be, all right, cool. Like it, it's there and it's said. Um, as far as the comedy scene, um, I feel like for the people that I know, the people I've met. I feel like for for the most part I am well liked. I feel like there's a few people out there like oh, that fucking guy again. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, and I like the people I've met thus far. I can't. I really have no complaints on everyone I've met. I um, it's funny when I told I told a friend of mine. Another thing I try to do, I try not to make this the gossipy, the the tea spilling podcast. Uh-huh. So when I have something to say that I feel like I shouldn't broadcast, I write it down. Get ready. That's about check this out. <laughs> this is about to be one of those moments. So I told a friend of mine. I was like, "Hey, I'm having I'm having dude come to do the podcast," and they were like, "Oh, this is the one that." Um, second, I'm gonna write it down. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been more nervous in my life. <laughs> this isn't you, by the way. Okay. We found out later that this wasn't. You. I started to get concerned. Okay. Do you know about this at all? Did you hear about this? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I know exactly what that is. And I am tired. Ty- I can't even say it because if I say who, everyone's gonna- I'm not going to say a name, but yeah. everyone's going to know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. However you want to word it. Yeah. My my doppelganger. Yeah. I So I looked this person up. So Okay. Because <laughs> people are going to watch this. So let me give a little bit of context and then we can move forward. A person did some crazy shit. Yeah. And doesn't seem to be around anymore because it was so um, reviled. It, uh-huh. People were very upset about it. Did that summarize it? Basically. A comedian did some crazy shit, and even the other comedians were like, that's way too like, far. Like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As for what they did, is, as soon as we say it, everyone's going to know, so let's not even. Right, right. But, um, yeah, I, I said, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, having, I'm having this dude. He's like, oh, the one who did such and such. <laughs> he did like, that. <laughs> and, and I was like, what? What happened? He seemed so cool. You right? had to do some deep diving and on it. I had to ask questions. I was like, do I bring this up? What do I do? And then we found out that that wasn't the same person. Right. And I got I got a sense of relief because I didn't want to have to do the, um, the you know, the, on some level, it's like journal is like, right. I got to ask. I what were you thinking when you did Yeah, why did you? <laughs> um, so that's your doppelganger? Have you been having an issue with that? No, it's just, I. Whenever some places I'll go to, people will refer to me as his name, and I'll be like, "It's it's not me." And I remember when that happened, <laughs> yeah. and I'll and how I, long ago was this? A few a few months. Like, I want to say like two, maybe two three months, months ago, okay. something like that. And around the time that it happened, I had like chopped off all my hair, oh. and I was like, "What a convenient time to yeah. get a hair <laughs> change my look up." It's crazy, crazy. Uh-huh. but even okay. So in a situation like that. Being liked, I think it, and I know I'm taking it to the extreme, mm-hmm. but that is an an extreme moment of hey, people in the scene need to like you. If you do something crazy, right, it, there is a point, there's a line that that people will have with you, and then you can't do this anymore. And I, yeah, think, I think that's what I'm trying to dig at here about finding that line. Is this is a this this is a small community, mm-hmm. and people will book you one if you're funny is it was this person considered particularly funny uh, i can't say okay fair enough fair enough i think you know what i think i think i have a good way to describe it i think there's three things that you need to be successful in entertainment not just stand up right you need to and you need at least if you have all three that's awesome but you need at least two out of the three you need to be likable you need to be good at your job undeniably good at your job right and you need to be on time you can be 
undeniable and on time, but everyone fucking hates you. Yeah. But you're undeniable and you're on time. Right. You can be um, not very good, but everyone likes you and you're on time. Mm Mm-hmm. And so in those, you He's know, punctual, we'll, yeah. we'll give him the spot. <laughs> yeah. I would rather be all three personally. Right. But that likability thing is to me internally the hardest part I personally struggle with. I, I don't know about you. I don't, I don't know because like like I said, it's it's the like I don't necessarily care if because I, I, I don't have an expectation of everyone to like me. I know that's mm-hmm. impo- it's an impossible thing to have. There's going to be people who have their you know biased opinions on me and whatever and that's totally fine whatever you know opinion you have on me but but i think the thing that would bother me the most is having an opinion without like having the conversation with me i think that's Mm -hmm. one of the things that agitates me about comedy and then myself personally is because i'll i i'll make i don't think there's anything that can be off the record when it comes to making jokes i think you can make anything make fun of everything under the sun yeah but when you know, I'll say something, I'll make a joke, and then someone's like, oh, that person's this or that. It's like, no, I just, I said that to make fun of it or to, you know, to get the laugh or whatever, mm-hmm. but sit down and have the actual conversation, and it's going to be the total opposite. You're going to be like, oh, that person actually doesn't think like that. Sometimes comedy is inherently ironic. You're saying the thing that you completely disagree with because it is funny to say. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I, I know that and and I I know that game. And the the <clears throat> giving someone a fair shot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Um and I like to think that this podcast allows that. Mm-hmm. Like I was talking to a comic, he was on the podcast, and he was like, Yeah, you know, when I first met you, we were I was wary of you because another person said that they didn't like you. And yeah, <laughs> I'm being careful with. Yeah, that. no, I, I got it. I got it. Uh, another person had an issue with me. Uh-huh. Decided to run their mouth a little bit to other people. God knows who. Right. And one of those people happened to be in the podcast and basically was like, "Yeah, no." And then I got to know you. I got to know you, and I was like, right. "Oh no, he seems reasonable." Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think. To go back to the the likability and the politics and all of that, I think those little things. I'm just expressing my insecurities and throwing them on you, <laughs> so you can just bounce off of that all you want. But I think that's what's going on here. I'm realizing is this feeling of like I don't have control over that, mm-hmm. and I'm a person that is working on not being so controlling over things. Mm-hmm. But over the things you don't have control yeah, over. Yeah, things you have no control over. Mm-hmm. So I have gotten to, like, I don't want to make it sound like I'm obsessing over this. Mm-hmm. I have gotten to a place where I live my day-to-day life is like, yeah, man, if you don't like me, I can respect that. But there is something about that situation that bothers me. Right. And I think because I want to make a living off of this, the idea that somebody can take food out of my mouth, potentially, right. by saying they don't like me to other people bothers me. And yeah, I think that's what I'm trying to articulate. I don't know. That that's one of the things. Like, I think just as people will do that, we'll hear something about someone, and we'll be like, "Ooh, like that's ooh, you mm-hmm. don't like them, and I like you, and I I've known you longer. I just met this person, so I have to pick your side." Mm-hmm. When in actuality, that's no, it's not the thing. Just because that person has a different interpretation of you does not mean that I'm gonna have that same interpretation. Like. Right, I I like you. you're a dope you're a dope fucking guy because one guy says something like oh I don't I don't like Aaron I'm like all right you don't like Aaron like it's not yeah. it's not a we thing yeah, yeah, yeah but you've gotten to know and this is what I love about the podcast is it's just a, some a, some a moment to be like who are you mm-hmm. you, know, you don't get that at the shows or the open mics right we're not gonna sit and have this type of conversation no we're just gonna try oh. and make each other laugh yeah. like, <laughs> oh man that was funny that, that, that. yeah 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 good set good set yeah. um. And we, I asked you to be on the show at, or be on the podcast when we were at Big Black, I believe yeah. it was, which I, I can't remember exactly what you said on stage, but you, it was hilarious. Um, dude, you had a great fucking set that night, dude. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. You were, you were controlling the room. <laughs> it was awesome. Thank you. Um, I think that's one of the funnest, sh- like, it's fun to be able to say, like, I buried these other comics, but it's way more fun when everyone does well. Mm-hmm. Like, when a show just goes... Everyone does great. It's 
it feels so good. Uh huh. And you, that that like when one person does bad and you got to be like, hey man, you did comedy. <laughs> it's Oh, it's the worst. It's the worst. It is. It is. And it's only funny because I, I did a show not too long ago yeah. where that happened. Like, everyone else did good except this one comic. And it's like, I don't want to say he did bad. Yeah. He did good for what his set was, but just, like, everyone else did mm-hmm. vastly better. And it was just like. Yeah, I've been that guy. You, you, we, we all have. We all have. Um, is your goal, I'm assuming your goal is to be a professional comic. That's, that's the plan. Yes, sir. When did you decide, like, this is the thing. This is what I'm doing. So my my dad refers to it as the oh shit moment. Okay. I, everyone he says everyone's got an oh shit moment. And I remember I was it was me and two of my buddies and we were driving to Chicago and we took I we all took mushrooms. We all took mushrooms. <laughs> everyone, everyone in the car. Yeah, like, everyone in the car. Right. It was three of us. We all took mushrooms. Allegedly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, allegedly. Allegedly. I don't know. I don't know who's gonna watch. <laughs> And um, we, were, we were just walking around, and then, you know, fast forward the story, we're driving back, and um, I had issues in my car. And my car broke down on the Chicago Skyway, right on the right after the toll. Okay. And I was str- – so I asked one of my other friends to come pick up the other two mm. and drop them off because this wasn't their, you know, shit show. They don't have to deal with it. And so I was stranded there from, like, midnight to 4 a.m. Mm. And I'll, plenty of time to think. <laughs> yeah, and you're on. Tr- how were you coming down? I or? was coming down at that okay. point, and so it was just plenty of time to think. And that was to me was like my oh shit moment. I was like, I really have to take it seriously if I want to do it. Can you? So first off, for anyone that's never done mushrooms, let me tell you, <laughs> there's a lot of realizations that you can come to. Yes. Um. W- can you break down the thought process? Like, so you break down. Your friends get picked up. You're sitting there alone. Yeah. What's going on in your head? How did you get to this point? It was just kind of more, you know, like think about, I feel like everyone at some point has a realization where they are in life mm. and you either are cool with it or you're like, this fucking sucks. And, you know, a car breaking down could happen to anyone that's like, it's not like the most odd situation or like the worst situation someone could be in, mm. but it's a situation no one really wants to be in. It's like, oh, I want my car to break. No, you don't want that to happen. It's like, I don't know. I think it was just thinking to myself, like, I don't want to be in a situation like this again. Or it just, I'm, it might have just been like having the time to myself where I was like, All right, I really got to just, you know, put my foot to the ground mm-hmm. and make this work if I want it to work. Because mm-hmm. what what's the old saying is like, if you, if you give up the guarantees, it won't happen. I'd rather take my chance to roll the dice, you know, at least say like I tried. I gave it my all, you know. I have, I agree with that thought process, and I have the utmost respect for that thought process. The, what do I, not what do I have to lose, but the, um, it feels better to try and fail uh-huh. than to not try at all. Right, because one, one of my things personally is I don't want to be at the end of the road, you mm-hmm. know, and it would be like, damn, what if I, what if I did do it? You know, what, yeah. what, what could have happened? Or I remember I don't, I don't know if it was on the Joe Rogan experience, but David Goggins took a turn. Write this down. <laughs> All right, go ahead, David Goggins. <laughs> no, he was like he was like saying this. He was basically painting the picture. He was like, "Say you die, and then like you you get to heaven or whatever, and then you see this board of what you were supposed to do." Mm. And it's like, you know, you don't want to get there and be like, "Oh, you, you, if you would have tried, you could have done all these things." Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, fuck, <laughs> like yeah. I didn't, I never did it. And that opportunity is gone forever. I, I, um, ooh, we're, we're about to get ready. You ready for the emotional part of the podcast? Let's get into it. <laughs> that rings true to me um, in a way that is. I'll start off by saying good for you for having all of this click at 23. Like. And I'm, I'm being the old man again, but... You're 32, man. You're not old. I know. I know. I know. I know I'm not old, but I think the older you get, the more you can look back and be like, oh, shh. The 20- wish, I wish I could have changed that. Yeah. When I wish I could have changed... More like, oh, I understand why I was doing what I was doing. Okay. But I shouldn't have been doing that. Yeah. Like, I, it just gives you... Distance will give you this sense of understanding. Mm-hmm. Like, if you look back... You're 23. If you look back when you were 13 and you think about what you were doing and how you were acting, 
I'm sure you probably wouldn't change anything because you're th- you're fucking 13. Right. But you can look back and you can say to yourself, oh, this is why oh, I was feeling insecure and I was. Okay. Yeah. It makes sense. It's uh, everything. The everything starts to click. Yes. When I look back to 23 and I think about where I was personally, I'm like, oh, I see why I didn't do the moves that you're making now. Mm-hmm. I had that oh shit moment at around 25. Yeah. The short version, I'll tell you the long version when this is done, but the short version is I had started comedy when I was 18, uh-huh. and I think there, there was a, another comedian who was a little younger than me around the same time. Years and years and years go by. I was fucking lollygagging and not doing the shit for real. Uh-huh. Then I saw that person on Netflix. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a breakdown. Yeah. I was weeping for hours. Like, I... It was like fucking. I've been wasting. T- it 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 clicked. Something clicked in that oh shit moment. The way your dad describes it uh-huh. is like that everyone was, has one. Yeah, and it was like oh I can't I can't. And I just started running towards comedy. Uh huh. And then and I, and then more stuff has happened since then. But that was my moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I had that. Not maybe not on shrooms, but <laughs> god damn, it I wasn't was, the <laughs> best experience. <laughs> it never is though. That's the thing about shrooms. Like to me, the best the best stuff you get out of shrooms are when you're not having fun. Uh huh. I, I don't know if you've experienced that with shrooms. I have not, luckily, had you like a bad a... experience on shrooms. Oh, who? Like, w- Ooh. like one of my friends. The first time I did shrooms, me, me and one of them, it was it was three other of my friends, and it was all our first time doing them. And one of my friends, he does the unhealthy thing that I want to say a lot of men do, mm-hmm. where we bottle everything up, we just put it on the shelf. Mm-hmm. We don't, we try not to deal with it. You know, when it comes out, we'll deal with it. And he didn't know that when on shrooms, you're not supposed, to, you're supposed to have everything out of your system basically before you do it. Because he, I remember his sister came home and her, she found that her, like her guinea pig had died. Mm. And he and she just screamed. He ran upstairs. We're all still downstairs. He comes downstairs in just a mass panic, and he was like, "Her guinea pig just died!" And all of us, like, c- consecutively high on shrooms, are just like, "Well, that's that's uh, that's life." Like, what the fuck? You never watched Lion King, or like? <laughs> and then he just like has this look on his face. I don't know if you've ever. Hopefully, you've never experienced it where you see another person's face, them just about to break down. Yeah. And I was just like. Oh fuck! <laughs> and have you ever been put in a situation where like you're high but you have to be the adult? Unfortunately, me too. That was my first time doing it. It was my first time on shrooms. I remember one of my friends called me. I was like, "Not right now!" And this guy's fucking breaking down. I had my other friend who was just dying laughing. I was like, "Take him upstairs, wash his face, like yeah. fucking get him together." My one other friend, he was like, "Dude, we should leave because his mom was coming home." <laughs> one second. <Sorry. laughs> Go ahead. And his mom was coming home. She's like, "I'll be there in like five minutes," and we're all just high on shrooms. And so I'm trying to get every everything together trying to clean up this mess like i'm fucking hannibal in the a-team <laughs> i'm like i love it when a plan comes together okay can i say that I'm, I'm we're gonna get back to all this other stuff again that moment again how old were you at this i want to say probably like 20 21 that's a crazy level of maturity i know i keep saying that about you but that's what I've been taking from this talking with you so far. It's just a strange level of maturity for someone that age on goddamn mushrooms to be the per- your other buddy's laughing. Your buddy one's falling out on the floor. The <laughs> other one like he's panicking. He's like, right. "Isn't it hot in here, guys?" Like he's taking off his hoodie, and I'm like, "No, it's actually pretty. It's pretty warm in here." Like, yeah. And the other one, he's just in my ear, like, "I want to go home." I'm just like, "Well, fuck!" And I can make phone calls. I'm like, "God damn it!" You, but and and maybe we'll figure this out during this one hour podcast but mm-hmm. what the theme i see with you is a sense a weird sense of maturity at a young age like i and i the, the decisions you make your thought process that's how i would describe you so far and and, and it's you know it's a compliment um thank you you're welcome <laughs> you're welcome um but to to get to the whole oh shit moment so for some context i had a buddy i found out recently what was Wednesday he died. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's we're processing. Um, have you had anyone in your life pass away? <sighs> this is gonna sound so horrible because <laughs> I have, but the emotional connection wasn't there. So mm-hmm. when it happened, I was like, like this person's gone, but it's, I haven't. I don't know if I just haven't processed it yet, or it's just I just I just didn't care. Do you mind if I ask about it? Or yeah, no, go. Ahead. How did you? What was your relationship to this person? 
Uh, it was my grandmother. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you weren't close with her growing up? Not particularly. Like, you know, I'll go over, you know, visit her and stuff like that. But there was no, like, fond memory. Uh, Yeah. Where, like, you know, like some people, they have that one adult that they grew up with. Like, that's their that's their rock. That's mm-hmm. that person they can always go to. Like, it was that's just my grandma. Yeah. yeah. And then I think also because she had, like, dementia and stuff. So whenever she would come over, it's like she wouldn't recognize me. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know if just – it was a weird experience. It's like, damn, like, I know you. You don't know yeah. me. And it's just how that person was operating. I don't know if it was just something where I, like – I put like I was on some Matt Damon show, just trying to push everything away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'm still waiting for Robin Williams to come and be like, it's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's some good context. So outside of that, you haven't had any deaths yet. No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yet, motherfucker. <laughs> it's the yet. It's like I know, but yeah. I don't know. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I will say then, I, I experiencing death is never fun. My first big one was my grandfather, uh-huh. and he was he was like my dad, and it was when I was about thirteen. Mm-hmm. And so <clears throat> the p- the positive of experiencing death when you're younger, I think, is that you're a little more prepared when you're older. Yeah. Um, because it is a it is a really indescribable feeling. Right. Um, it's been even at my age then it's like, well, it's it's this is an older person with your grandma. It's it's almost like it's a little easier to process because they are older. That mm-hmm. is what happens. Right. But then I've had uh, had a friend who committed suicide when he was about 17, 18. Mm-hmm. And that's a different, like, it, 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 it hits you in a different way. And then this current friend, uh, not suicide, it was a car accident. Okay. Um, but also way too young to be, di- it, it does not make sense. Right. Um, and with this guy, I... I Love him very much. This is not me speaking ill of the dead. But he was a guy who would say to me, I remember before I moved, he said, um, in so many words, he said, I'll live life once I'm a successful comic. That was his mindset. Okay. Now, now I didn't um, I didn't talk to him much. It's been three years since I've moved, so I hadn't talked to him on a day-to-day basis, maybe his mentality changed since then, but I kind of doubt it. Mm-hmm. I think that was probably still his mentality. And when I say life, I mean like, I'll worry about getting a relationship when after I'm a successful comic. Oh, I'll go have fun and do this. I'll have fun after I'm a successful comic. Mm-hmm. He, he put off life to focus on just stand-up, essentially. And now it's like, was it was that worth it? You know, did did you? And I don't know. I can't ask him. I wish I could. That's, right. the, that's the difficult about the difficulty about death is it's so final. But I would love to if I had the chance. I would ask him like, where? What do you? How do you feel? Like, mm-hmm. is was was just pursuing comedy and nothing else in your life? Was that worth it? Did you feel fulfilled? Mm-hmm. Was you know, if you could go back, would you change something? I'll tell you right now. I just got goosebumps because I have that same mentality right now. Yeah. Where it's I'm I, I'm right now for me I'm not in a position to where like I'm interested in having a relationship or really doing anything else like this is like other than like quote unquote like the mission which is to be a successful stand up mm-hmm. and from time to time I wonder if that's the right decision or not but only time can tell you know what I mean yeah, yeah. I will give would you like old man opinion I would love it okay. I also felt that way. Uh, that moment I had, my oh shit moment, uh-huh. it put me this only stand up matters. <laughs> I'll take getting on stage. Fuck my family and my friends and right. my dog. Fuck everything. It's just stand up. And then quarantine hit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, fuck only my family. <laughs> I know, right? Like, the quarantine hit. And when it was all stripped away, I you just. You just you take a second, or I don't know how about your quarantine was, but for me it was like, oh, who am I? Yeah, like I'm I I, I lived life, and my whole identity was I am a stand up comedian. Right, and it was funny the in that that thing lingered even until my through my first year of Chicago mm-hmm. was still like no I'm, I'm in grind mode I'm in Chicago for a reason. And then I just burnt myself out. And that summer, I took two months off of comedy on my own. Mm-hmm. And I just existed. Um, and 
it was the best thing not only for me but for my comedy later on Mm -hmm. because I had figured out a little more of who I was I had something to pull from that was super genuine that I understood for myself Mm -hmm. and it made my comedy better so my opinion is first off you're gonna live the process how you live it Uh maybe maybe that again this is no offense maybe that is the immature part of being 23 having that mindset probably but if you're able to dig into that Mm -hmm. and learn how to balance between i want to be a comedian and also i'm a human with something to to draw from to put into comedy i think it would behoove you and that's that's my old man opinion i'm sorry the word behoove i like (laughs) do you have that too like as a comedian where it's like you find just certain words to be funny yeah. Like behoove, kerfuffle, <laughs> flabbergasted, flabbergasted, uh, flabbergasted, tomfoolery. Yeah, just the yeah. word, just hearing the word would make me laugh. Being, I think, being a comedian and a rapper are so similar. Oh, they have to be. Yeah, they and have to be finding unique ways to describe things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, I, I, if whenever that first death happens, unless it's you, uh, you <laughs> <laughs> knock on wood. Whenever that first death happens, <laughs> by all means, you're welcome to reach out because I can assure you it's not going to be fun. Um, but I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, of course. But I hope, I mean, as, as someone as mature as you are, I really hope that you um, take a second to find yourself, to not waste your 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 youth and your um, body. Like... Mm-hmm. Oh, my back's already fucked, dude. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> my back is forty-seven. It's <laughs> Did anything happen? Is it like injury or just? I think just. So I used to work at UPS, and I would move like the mm. the packages that are like seventy-five pounds or more. Mm. I think I just fucked up my back. Didn't lift my legs enough. That'll do it. <laughs> That'll do it. Um, I don't know. I I can, can I ask? Is there anything outside of stand? Let's say stand up. You're just not allowed to do it anymore. Is there anything outside of stand up that you love that you would do? Shit, I don't know. Sometimes I do feel like I missed out on my true calling, which is porn. <laughs> Cause I just like I see like the guys on Twitter. I'm just like I could just be knee deep in pussy right now and getting paid for it. <laughs> I wouldn't have to tell a single joke anymore. I could just be like, wow, you're just like you. You do porn, but you are funny though. <laughs> yeah, funny, just the, the you. That's a good niche. I don't think there's a lot of hilarious porn stars. I don't think like that. Yeah. I would. <laughs> I would love for like a porn company just to get like a room full of comedy writers for like the scenes. <laughs> so good. Do you do you know Adam Twenty Two? I do. Yeah. Do you know about his wife and the cuck situation? Where he like he's letting like all these guys have a competition to yeah. fuck his wife. <laughs> yeah. The first one was the big black dude. I can't remember his name. Yeah. Um. Would you be that big black? Would you be willing if you were in porn? Would you do that? Would you cuck a man for? Probably, yeah, <laughs> I'd probably be on those? the same board he is. Like, I would do it, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't like. Yeah, I'll do it for you, but I wouldn't do it myself. That's like, fair. That's fair. I'd be that guy. I'd be. What if he was in the room watching? Could you? Could I you think it? I can do it. Like that was one of the things. Like I think I have sex with other people in the room watching. I okay, think I can do it. Okay, Roy just but it. having like one other guy just like stare into my soul while I just he needs raw to dog his wife. <laughs> He needs to look in your eyes when you come, too. He needs to, like... Well, that's a lack of etiquette, too. Like, come on, man. You're a guy. You know. <laughs> Don't just stare. It's like it's like going to the barber. Don't just stare at me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Look away. Make conversation. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Okay. Sincere question. Do you think... Let's say porn... Or porn. Let's say stand-up <laughs> was taken away from you. Would you get into porn? Do you think you'd actually do that? I don't know. Okay. I, don't, I, I, I talk shit. I, it, it's something I'd probably, like get my toes in but i don't know if it's something i would do professionally professionally yeah i'd probably i'd probably be one of those guys i'd be like sylvester stallone Ooh, like i have yeah. like i have a sex tape out but it's it, it was a one and done kind of thing it's rare to be able to go backwards in that you know what i mean like i know mia khalifa has p- pivoted a lot but i still can't not like we know what you're known for like yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah we know what you got it's like kim kardashian yeah. too where it's like yeah you, you you do all this like you know you got the clothing the makeup but things you know who got real fucked over this by actually i don't know if you know if you'll give a fuck about or know who this is do you know monica Lewinsky? yeah yeah i know monica (laughs) the most famous blowjob ever (laughs) like (laughs) what year were you born 2000 fuck so yeah i was it happened well before me god 
Damn. But you know about Monica Lewinsky. Yeah. yeah. That's what I... She Apparently, she's a very sweet woman who's very... Um, self-aware and is joking about it like she leans into Did Bill it. say that <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine like you, that's what you're known you're known for that that's your right like you say Monica, Monica Lewinsky first thing yeah. blowjob yeah. like blowjob for the president you don't even I don't even like it's crazy it's crazy I, I, do you sorry what no I was just gonna say I don't think they should have gave dragged her through the mud the way that I Terrible. think they did because it's what president hasn't? Like, that would be my first night. I would look at my wife and be like, hey, come it, on. <laughs> it's, you know, as I got older, I look back and I'm like, oh, Bill's a fucking asshole for letting her take the brunt of that. How old was she? About 18, 19, probably. Was she? She was very young. Okay. She was like an intern or something. Mm. And this, if this happened, Jesus. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. The world's a crazy place. But. Right. I don't know. How do we get. Here, I don't know. <laughs> you asked me what would I do without stand up, and I said porn, and ah, we've just I gotten mean, here. We've we the ball has rolling down the. So I will I'll answer the question with probably a more honest answer, okay, sure. which is probably something in music. Oh, what do you play an instrument? Uh, I I started playing piano a little bit. Mm. Uh, I do want to get into like bass, drums, and saxophone. I think saxophone is probably like okay. if I can get Careless Whisper down. I, there's no way I can't get pussy. <laughs> Yo, I play bass, so if you ever want to... Oh, shit, nice. Yeah, if you ever want to jam, you please let me know. For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, that, I think, personal, and, and what I've noticed is the the audience for this podcast is mostly open micers, I'm starting to realize. Mm -hmm. Like, people that are new to comedy watch this so that they can see who the other comedians are in the scene. Um, but if you guys are listening, if I'm to give you a suggestion, it's... I think every comic should take a step back and think, if I didn't have comedy, what the fuck would I do? Because it, it gives you, again, it gives you something to draw from, but whatever. I think I'd be shit out of luck, dude. Like, like, because one of the reasons I got into comedy was like laughing is one of the things, like making people laugh is one of the very few things I'm good at. Like I wouldn't, yeah. I was like, English was the only subject I was good at at school. Yeah. So I was like, okay, if I can make people laugh, I can write you know, basically all that shit. Find that balance. Yeah. Okay. I have so I have my my regular last question that I ask people, mm -hmm. but I also want to ask you more shit. I enjoy talking to you. You're an easy person to speak to. I appreciate you as well. As well, I'm enjoying this. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna just do the last question. We'll make, we'll keep this a nice. I have people back. It, it'll you know <laughs> you know when you don't finish sentences. You ready for the last question? I am. Okay. So I always ask people to look in the camera for this. Pretend that this is this camera is you five years from now. <laughs> you can yeah, and you can you can say whatever you want to you five years from now. What do you what would you say? You better be fucking Coco Jones, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, five years from now? Oh yeah. fuck. I feel like Matthew McConaughey at the Oscars now. Shit. Five years, one of my twenty three, so I'm twenty eight. Better be doing better, fuckhead. Like that's all I <laughs> Better be doing better. <laughs> better be doing better. And on that note, let's take this picture. All right, bet.